Hey, welcome back to Kotlin Bytes. My name is Jacob, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about converting some very simple recursion problems into iteration problems using some of the helper functions built into Kotlin. Let's get started. <laughs> Most of you are probably familiar with a factorial. Computing the factorial is oftentimes one of the first problems you encounter when using recursion and iteration. The reason why it's taught for both iteration and recursion is because the point is that it shouldn't be done with recursion. And the reason why is because of this concept of a stack overflow. That's kind of what this, the topic of this video is going to be about. It's how to avoid that and some of the utilities that Kotlin provides to help mitigate and streamline this process. There's something very similar to the factorial, which is called the nth triangle. So the factorial is where you take the number, so maybe five factorial. Five factorial is five times four, times three, times two, and then times one, that doesn't change it. And the nth triangle is the same, but instead of using multiplication, it uses addition. So the nth triangle of five would be five plus four plus three plus two plus one. And so both these are very similar and the, the equation for both recursively or iteratively is actually exactly the same. You just switch the multiplication symbol with a addition symbol. Let me show you how that looks visually. Here's an animation of the nth triangle. When n equals one, there's only one circle. When n equals 2, there's 3. 3 is 6. 4, there's 10. And this continues on, um, adding on to layers. Okay, let's get to it. Here is a nth triangle function that's recursive. And we're going to transform this into an iterative function. This function is not perfect because it assumes that n is going to be a natural number or 0. Uh, but again, for the purpose of this video, this function is gonna be fine. And so the way it works, if n is zero or one, it just returns itself. Uh, otherwise, it's going to add itself to th whatever the result of the nth triangle is for n minus one. And it's gonna keep doing this until it reaches the base case, which is the first item here, uh, which is, well, n is less than two. One question that you might have is why would we even convert this to an iterative approach? Because this seems like a fairly clean approach to the problem, right? In fact, it works. It works very well. If I were to print the solution, uh, let's say nth triangle of 10, 55. And actually something interesting I noticed, uh, there is a pattern if you increase by 10, by, by a factor of 10 each time, uh, you get this 50, 50. So 10 was 55, uh, 100 was 50, 50, and then 1,000 is 500, 500. And that, that pattern continues, it, it seems. I haven't proved it, but it seems like it does. So far, it seems like this function is working very, very well and almost efficiently. Uh, and although it may be fairly efficient, it's not the best approach because if we enter in an n number that is too large, we're gonna get something called the stack overflow error. For example, if I enter in 10,000, by the way, the underscore doesn't mean anything, it's just for uh, readability. It's automatically converted to the number when you compile. But if we run this, okay, that works, cool. Let's add another number, run it. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's our stack overflow error. If we run to the top, it'll literally say stack overflow error. And this is ultimately, ultimately the largest issue with recursion. Uh, if you don't use recursion properly, it will uh, inevitably run into a stack overflow error. So what happens is that this function calls itself it's, I love how IntelliJ get t like tells you when a recursive call is about to happen. Um, but it calls itself, in this case, it wants to call itself 100,000 times. Anyway, the fix is to use iteration for this particular problem. Here's how we would do it.
So traditionally, you would create a loop and you would just add something to it. So for example, um, actually I wanna keep the same base case here, but then I would create a variable for uh, my summation. And it could be an integer or a long, doesn't make much of a difference. Once you've created the sum, you then create a loop. So for, and we'll just say i in one dot dot n sum plus equals i. And finally, we return that sum. It seems like there's a lot of code here for doing something very simple, and we will fix that. But let's first test to make sure it works. Okay. Awesome. 10,000. Awesome. Okay. And if we go to 100,000, uh, it looks like we get a weird number, which doesn't look like the number we expected, right? Because we expected it to be like five or 50,000, 50,000 or something. So uh, actually what's happening here is uh, we're, we're using integers, not longs. So we can replace this with a long and uh, it's gonna just tell us to use longs. So I'm gonna replace all these longs. And this is going to be long as well. Awesome. Okay, if we run this again. There we go. So that's what we expected, 50,000, 50,000. Now, of course, longs have a limit as well. Um, and beyond that, you have to use something called, a, I think, a big integer. It's a Java class. Yep, and it keeps working the way we expect for pretty much any number, and it's quick because, it, I mean, Sure, the computer is running this a million times, but uh, yeah, it's instant. It's such a quick and easy operation, so it's able to compute it quite quickly. Okay, so let's use a function called reduce. Uh, reduce is reduce can be used for pretty much anything um, that has to do with taking a, a list or a collection of items and then reducing them down to a single item, which is perfect for what we're doing here because we're taking a sequence and we're reducing it down to the sum of all of the items in the sequence. So we're just gonna simply return, let me get this out of the way. One dot dot n dot reduce. And reduce has something called an accumulator and then also whatever the current value is. So we're gonna take the accumulator and we're going to add the, the current long number to it. And this value is going to be returned to be then used as the next accumulator. And eventually it's just gonna return the accumulator and that's gonna be our result. So let's try this again. There you go. It, works the same way. Uh, let's use some smaller numbers. So one should be one. Two should be three. Okay. Three should be, what is that, six? Six. And four should be 10, right? Yep, there we go. So that seems to be working quite well. Um, of course, to properly test this, you would write unit tests. Um, but yeah, this, this works. Now, I think there's also a function where you could just say ma or not max, sum. Uh, and this would work as well. This is sort of a cheap way of achieving the same result, but uh, I wanted to show reduce because reduce does offer particular flexibility when it comes to the operations of the mapping inside. That's it, you guys. Just a very short video showing you helper function. Uh, reduce is a very powerful function that can be used more for just converting recursive functions to iteration functions. But that's one use case of it. I'll be making other videos 
uh, with other applications to helper functions that are built into Kotlin, because that's what this channel is all about. But yeah, uh, if you guys have any other questions or recommendations for videos, post them in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you.